Hello viewers, welcome to Plant Ecology Series. I am Dr. Sanavar Soham from Department of Botany, Kalindi College, University of Delhi. An introduction regarding the various abiotic factors that occur in the environment has been given in the previous lecture. Abiotic factors we all know form an important component of an ecosystem and affect the survival of an individual, population or even community to a greater extent. In this lecture, I will discuss about one of the major abiotic factor, soil. Soil we all know forms the outer layer of the earth's crust. The word soil is derived from word solum, meaning earthy material that supports the plant growth. Soil acts as a substrate that provides mechanical support to plants and as a reservoir of water and nutrients for the plants. It is composed of organic and inorganic materials. Now inorganic components we all know include mineral elements which are derived from the parent rock material. The organic matter comprises of organic waste, dead remains of plants, animals and their decomposition products. Large number of algae and microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses and fungi form an important component of soil. Now what is soil? Soil is a natural resource formed by weathering that means breakdown of the rocks. It has been defined as matrix, say sand, silt and clay matrix containing living biomass and dead organic matter with some concentration of air as well as water. It is a rich source of organic and inorganic materials that support plant life and microscopic communities. Now inorganic material I have already discussed includes mineral elements which are derived from the weathering and fragmentation of the parent rock material whereas the organic components include organic waste, dead remains of plants, animals and their decomposition products. Now various models have been proposed to explain the origin and formation of the soil. So let's move on to the understanding of formation of soil. The process of soil formation or soil genesis was posed by Hans Jenny and Roy W. Simonson. According to these authors, soil formation consists of two steps. Number one, accumulation of parent material and second, differentiation into the different horizons. Now organic matter is added to the soil after decay and decomposition of remains of plants and animals. Now moving on to the soil formation, the process of soil formation begins with the changes in the parent rocks, the parent material, accumulation of raw material followed by built up of organic matters materials at the surface. Now various physical, chemical, biological and anthropogenic processes are involved in the alteration of the parent material to form soil and it's a very very long process. Now there are two main steps which are involved in soil formation. Number one, the weathering of rocks that is the breakdown of rocks. It can be either physical or chemical. Now physical weathering occurs by the mechanical forces. Now changes in temperature cause contraction or expansion of rocks leading to the formation of cracks and fissures in the rocks. This breaks down rocks into the smaller pieces. So because of high temperature also the formation of cracks and fissures happen because of which the rocks are broken. On the other hand due to lower temperatures there is freezing and the water present in the rock crevices they cause expansion and this force breaks 
the rocks into smaller pieces. So, change in, in temperature, the change in the temperature causes either contraction or expansion of the rocks. This leads to the breaking up of the rocks into smaller pieces. Now, besides these, hail, rainfall, wind also break the rocks into smaller particles due to friction. Now, if we talk of chemical weathering, it is brought about by the action of water or other activities of organisms which are present in the soil. Water brings chemical changes in the rocks due to dissolution. It dissolves. So, when it dissolves, there are changes, the chemical changes which happen in the rocks. It leads to the formation of newer substances and breaking up of the parent rock material. Oxidation reduction reactions and organic acids produced by the microbes assist in the breakdown of rocks and add organic matter to the soil. So, the second point, the second way or important part in the soil formation is mineralization and humification. So, after withering, what happens is mineralization and humification. In this, the small pieces of rocks and particles produced by weathering of rocks get converted into a homogeneous matrix via the process of mineralization. Plants and animals play important role in this process of mineralization. As the roots of the plants invade the soil particles, they further break down the particles into the fine material. The microbes associated with the roots of the plants, they secrete the organic acids and humic acids which further assist in breakdown of the parent rock material to soil fine particles. Microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi, actinomycetes assist in decomposition process. So, what are we understanding? The process of mineralization and mineralization happens because of roots, because of microorganisms present in the soil. Now, in the process, the organic compounds, they get converted into inorganic nutrients. The breakdown of organic compounds leads to the formation of simple products such as carbon dioxide, water and minerals. This complete process of conversion of organic compounds into inorganic nutrients and formation of very simple products such as carbon dioxide, water and minerals is called mineralization. Now, incompletely decomp decomposed organic material left after mineral mineralization forms the humus, which is a dark, homogeneous, amorphous, colloidal substance. Humus gives loose texture to the soil, which provides aeration and helps in retaining water and nutrients. The, the formation of humus is very, very important in soil formation as it aids the plant growth. Now, the process of soil formation depends upon several factors such as parent rock material, climate and topography of the area. Now, there are various factors that affect the soil formation. The development of soil profile is influenced by several factors. Now, these mainly include changes in the parent material, climate change, topography and even the organisms present in the soil. All these factors change the characteristic of a soil and give it a distinctive profile. Now, this is the diagrammatic representation where we come to know about the various factors that affect soil formation. Now, in this you can see climate, topography, the parent material from where the soil will be formed, the biological factor or organisms which are present such as plants, animals, microbes as well as the time, the factor time, all these things that at what time of the year, at what time the soil is being formed, all these factors accumulate and all these factors cumulatively uh, affect the formation of soil. We will take one by one in detail. Now, the first one being the parent material. The parent material plays an important role in deciding the composition or the characteristic of this soil. Now, the chemical composition of the parent material determines the properties of the soil, properties such as color, 
texture, structure, mineral composition and also the permeability of soil depends upon the parent material, how permeable it will be. All these factors depend upon from where, from what are the parent material from which the soil will be formed. A soil developed from a coarse grained parent material is resistant to weathering and is coarse in texture. The soil formed from limestone possesses high level of soluble bases and is generally in is generally fertile in nature. So, depending upon what type of grains or what type of parent material the soil and thereafter the growth of plants is affected. Now, the soil formed from the parent material which is low in soluble ions is acidic. This is because water moving through the soil removes the bases and substitutes them with the hydrogen ions. So, soils developed from the sandstone are thus low in soluble bases. Now, second factor which affects the soil formation is climate. Now, the climate influences soil development in soil chemistry. Chemical climatic factors regulate the rate of chemical reactions occurring during the soil formation. Precipitation also affects development of horizons as the translocation of dissolved ions to the soil gets affected. Soils of hot dry desert regions are generally devoid of organic material because less vegetation and few microbial species are available for the decomposition. The lack of precipitation inhibits the chemical weathering leading to coarse textured soil in the arid regions. That is why we see the there is a difference of kind of fauna, the flora present in the arid zones. Now, in contrast, high rate of annual precipitation flushes out organic material from the soil. So, the cold temperature restricts the microbial activity, hence affecting the build up of organic matter in the tundra region. So, all in all, we have just gone through the examples of various situations where due to high precipitation or due to cold temperatures or due to heated temperatures, how the soil formation gets affected and how it further affects the flora of the region. In warm and wet tropics, say, rapid rate of bacterial activity is there. It promotes decomposition leading to built up of high organic matter, which is well suited for the growth of plants. Now, the rate of biological processes get enhanced in the presence of rising temperature. The rate of reaction gets doubled for each 10 degree Celsius rise in the temperature. So, enzyme catalyzed reactions are sensitive to high temperatures and attain a maximum between 30 to 35 degree Celsius. So, temperature is also in a way affecting the formation of soil. The velocity of water determines the rate of soil erosion and deposition of organic matter. Obviously, if the velocity is higher and it is harsh, soil will be eroded at a faster rate. The rate of percolation of water that is the movement of water from one part of the soil to another is also affected by the climate. The rate of absorption of solar radiation is regulated by soil properties such as color. So, dark soils absorb more radiation. So, all these factors are definitely directly they are regulating the formation of soil and they are affecting the formation of soil. Now, moving on to the next important factor that affects soil formation, it is topography or the elevation. Now, it is a factor that poses a significant impact on soil formation because it determines runoff water. Now, slope angle and the length affects the runoff generated when rain falls to the surface. Now, water erosion is more effective on the steeper unvegetative slopes. So, obviously, water will be eroding faster because there is no resistance of the due to vegetation and also they are steeper. So, erosion is more effective in such places. Now, water moving across the surface drives away the parent rock material, thus impeding soil development. 
because the soil which is moving will be settling somewhere and there will be formation of soil. So, the amount of water and its rate of flow increases down the slope direction. Now, moving on to the next factor, the biological factor which affects the soil formation. Now, we all know the biological components of the soil include vegetation, microorganisms and associated fauna. These organisms influence the soil composition to a greater extent. Soil forming fauna mainly includes microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi, actinomycetes, earthworms, small arthropods and even the burrowing animals such as rabbits and moles. Now, the biological processes carried out by organisms present in the soil or associated with roots of the plants help in build up of organic matter in the soil. The pioneer species such as grasses and algae lead to build up of organic matter on the surface of the parent material. So, as we all know that weathering is important part, mineralization definitely is more more important and biological factors are the main uh, factors which basically help in the gathering of or built up of the organic matter on the surface of the plant material. The soils that possess less number of microbes like the desert soils or the soils of the arid regions, they are also not well formed and they lack organic matter and that is the reason we see that they are inhabited or they have less vegetation there. Now moving on to the next factor time, all pedogenic pedogenic means soil forming processes occur over a time it is not random it is gradual it takes time young soils show only minimal profile development that is possess only horizon A I will be discussing about various horizons from O to R in my upcoming lecture. So possesses horizon A while the mature soils possess all the horizons. Now, if we now move on to the composition of soil, soils are mainly composed of four elements which are minerals, organic matter, air and water. Now, most of the top soils they contain about 45 percent minerals, 25 percent water, 25 percent air and only 5 percent of organic matter. Now, these percentages can vary tremendously depending upon the type of soil and that definitely uh, affects or regulates what kind of vegetation will be upcoming in that particular area. Now, this is a pie diagram and it shows the composition of the ideal soil. As I told you, there are the four factors, mineral, soil, air, water and organic matter which mainly form the soil. So, this is the ideal composition where you can see that this smaller part is the organic matter and rest of the parts the maximum one is the mineral and soil air and water form 25 percent in an ideal soil. Now minerals they are formed by breaking of parent rock material and addition of dissolved substances. These mainly include elements such as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, various alkaline metals on the earth. So, organic matter consists of the dead plants, animals, microbes, fungi or their parts as well as waste products in various stages of decomposition. So, as I told you 5 percent of the soil is the organic matter and it is made up of all these things that plants, animals, microbes and they decompose and they take time in decomposition and they finally form the soil organic matter which supports the flora of an area. Now, it is formed as a result of decay and decomposition of the organic compounds. The elements composition of SOM that is soil organic matter includes carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus and sulfur. Now, Organic matter forms a minor portion of the soil but has a very strong impact on the properties and functions of the soil.
very very important point because the organic matter definitely is impacting the properties and functions of the soil organic matter is able to absorb and hold large quantities of water it also helps in binding water to the soil and holding the soil aggregates together i will also be discussing soil aggregates in few in just few minutes so organic matter has high cation exchange capacity why because the negative charges on the organic matter of the soil they attracts the cations which are necessary for the plant growth and reproduction so the soil having organic matter content of 20 to 35% of the dry weight is considered as organic soil because they'll be they will be having higher cation exchange capacity which is really good for the growth of plants so uh, organic matter also affects the formation of soil and composition of soil now if we talk of air and water they occupy the pore spaces between the solid soil particles the amount of air present in the soil depends upon the amount of water so they are interconnected they are interrelated if more water is present then pore space can hold that soil is said to be saturated now if the soil is saturated by water little air is available obviously because the pores is occupied by water so there will be less space for the air in anaerobic conditions air spaces are filled with water oxygen and other gases are unable to diffuse from the outside atmosphere air helps in the process of oxidation and converts organic material into useful elements so the amount of water held in the soil depends upon its texture and the structure in sandy soils for example water drains quickly while in clay water is held between the soil particles why because sandy soils uh, they have they are larger in size they larger so what happens is the pore space is bigger the water drains quickly whereas clay yeah, the difference between the distance between the soil particles is very small so what happens the water remains there stuck between the pores so in the areas of low evaporation rate water moves downwards and dissolves the soluble minerals together with the soluble humus materials and the process is called leaching or alluviation now moving on to various types of water which are present in the soil so first one is the gravitational or ground water the water that moves into the soil under the influence of gravity after rain or irrigation is the gravitational water so which the water which moves with the influence of gravity is the gravitational or the ground water the second one is the capillary water what is capillary water the amount of water retained in the soil against the pull of gravity so even if obviously due to gravity the water should be moving down or seeping downwards still there is some water which is retained which forms bond with the soil and is retained in the soil against the pull of gravity and that is known as capillary water the water is enclosed in between the spaces between soil particles as a thin film this is the most important source of water utilized by plants from the soil now the third is the hygroscopic water the amount of water in air dried soil the water is present in relatively small point small amount in this form right so the moisture holding capacity of the soil is governed by its properties such as particle size porosity the texture maximum amount of water or moisture the soil can hold is called its maximum retentive capacity now in this condition air present in soil pores gets replaced by water after heavy rainfall or irrigation if water supply is stopped 
water from larger pores, macro pores drain out and pores get filled with air, while water remains retained in smaller pores or the micro pores. And the water left in soil after draining out of gravitational water is called its field capacity. Thank you.